happy little games. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Growing up in the golden age of arcades was a magical time. Game concepts and designs were exciting and new. And personally, I could not wait to go to Aladdin's castle every week to see what new games would be on display. Now granted, being a 13 year old boy, I had other distractions in my life such as school, girls, friends, girls, bowling, and girls. But I could not wait to drop a few quarters into the latest and greatest arcade games whenever I had the chance. There was one game on display that I gravitated to almost immediately with the fast paced action in all the different eras throughout history. The name of the game was Time Pilot and it's still fondly remembered to this day. What was the original game the developer of Time Pilot was supposed to be working on all the while creating this one in secret? Let's find out as we travel through time to learn the history of Time Pilot. The year is 1981 and recent hire at Konami of Japan, Yoshiki Akimoto has been tasked with creating a game that he was not quite fond of. Konami had been around since 1969, getting its start in the jukebox rental and repair business. They had been producing arcade games since the mid-1970s, and their first major arcade hit was Frogger. Various other successful games soon followed, such as Scramble, Super Cobra, and Tutankham. Mr. Akimoto was hired as a graphic designer and impressed his bosses enough that he was quickly moved into game design. In late 1981, they came to him with an assignment to create a driving game where the player would have to complete certain parts of the game to be granted a license. He did not find this concept interesting, but he did have an idea for something else. Mr. Akimoto was always fascinated with history aviation, and time travel and wanted to incorporate all of these elements into a single game. When he took this proposal to his bosses, they immediately rejected it and sent him back to work on the driving game. However, he knew his game design was good, so he instructed his development team of five people to work on his time traveling shooter in secret. Whenever his bosses would come around, he would work on the driving game they requested. To keep up his charade, he would come in at 8 a.m. and work until 5.30 a.m. the following morning, sleeping only a few hours in the office. As far as his game goes, he wanted a futuristic shooter that would see you travel from World War I, World War II, Vietnam, and beyond. Time Pilot was released in 1982 by Konami. The game is a one or two player one button shooting extravaganza in which you have to destroy everything that moves as the action is fast and furious. The goal of the game is to rescue all of the pilots and take down enemy fighter jets of each era. After defeating 56 enemies, which is indicated by a bar on the bottom of the screen, you will fight a mini-boss, which some have said is the first game to include multiple mini-bosses. Your fighter stays in the center of the screen, but you can do a complete 360 while only being able to shoot in the direction you are facing. As I mentioned, the gameplay is fast, but the animation is silky smooth, making for a great gameplay experience. 
Throughout the level, you will see soldiers parachuting who you can collect for a 1,000 point bonus. Also, at various times, you will see a group of five aircraft lined up together indicated by a special sound. If you shoot all five of these in a short time span, you will receive a 2,000 point bonus. After defeating the 56 enemies and taking down the mini boss, you will be whisked away to another time period. The eras that you travel to are 1910, which has biplanes and a blimp for the mini boss. 1940, which has World War II model planes and a B-25. 1970, which involves helicopters and a large blue CH-46. 1982, with fighter jets and a B-52. 5. To the futuristic timeline of 2001 with UFOs in outer space. For obvious reasons, there are no parachuting soldiers in this level. As you progress through the levels, the difficulty increases and so does the ferocity of the enemy attacks. For example, in the 1910 level, they will fire bullets similar to your own ship, but also drop bombs. The 1940 planes require multiple hits. The 1970s helicopters are smaller and can fire homing missiles, etc. After you complete the UFO stage, the game repeats only harder and faster. Once it was revealed to his bosses that Mr. Akimoto had worked on this and not a driving game, Tensions were high until the game was released and was a financial success. However, the bosses at Konami took all the credit for this game. Battered down but not defeated, Mr. Akimoto would go on to create the shooter Gyrus for Konami. Before finally either leaving the company or being fired depending on the story you read. Mr. Akimoto would go on to work on some of the biggest franchises in the history of arcades including Final Fight and Street Fighter 2. In 1984, Konami released Time Pilot 84 into the arcades. This was sold primarily as a conversion kit and it played almost identically to the original arcade game. The main difference this time around is that not only do you have a button to fire your primary weapon, but you also have a second button to fire homing missiles for silver objects which have to be locked onto to destroy. There is no more traveling into the past so a flux capacitor is no longer needed as everything takes place across future landscapes. After defeating a certain number of enemies, a mini boss will appear which requires multiple shots to defeat. There are seven levels in total with the difficulty increasing on each one. Unlike the first game which had no secrets, this one features quite a few such as static objects in the background that you can shoot for bonus points. The biplane from the original game will occasionally appear and can be destroyed for an extra life. The graphics and animation have been upgraded and they look fantastic. This was never officially converted to any home system. In 1995, Ganbear Goman Kira Kira Dochu Boku Ga Dancer Ni Nada Wak was released for the Super Famicom. That has got to go down as the longest name in the history of gaming. 
If you manage to clear the game 100%, you unlock a special version of Time Pilot called Time Pilot 95. In 1999, it was released as a part of Konami's arcade classics on the PlayStation 1. In 2002, Konami Collector's Series Arcade Advance was released for the Game Boy Advance and featured Time Pilot, along with five other classic arcade games. This one is notable because it includes an extra sixth area not found in the arcade game, which is 1 million BC, and instead of shooting planes, you have to shoot down pterodactyls. To access this, you have to enter the Konami code. The game was released on Xbox Live in 2006. The Nintendo DS received Konami Classic Series arcade hits, which included a whopping 15 games on one cartridge with Time Pilot among them. A newer version was released on Xbox Live by Digital Eclipse and featured updated graphics as an option. It's amazing what a fresh coat of paint will do. Now, playing on ColecoVision, Mr. Do and Time Pilot, two of the best new arcade games for the best system made. This is Time Pilot, a battle with aircraft from the past and the future. Homing missile! Got him! Uh-oh! Blue bomber! And this is Mr. Do. Mow a path to his fruit and start picking, but don't get picked off. Powerball! Nice shot. Mr. Do and Time Pilot, now playing on ColecoVision. The best system in town keeps getting better. The first one we are looking at is the trusty, but perhaps rusty, Atari 2600 version. This is about as bare bones as you can get when it comes to Time Pilot. As a matter of fact, the last time I saw something this plain, I married it. The graphics are reminiscent of the arcade game, but the animation and scrolling has quite a bit of herky-jerky action going on. The colors are very muted and are a bit distracting when playing. There is no music, but as far as the sound effects go... Farts and queefs, anybody? Whoever thought that this sounded even remotely decent should have been taken around back and beaten with a wooden stick. The controls are sluggish and not very responsive, although all five levels are here. Now let's take a look at the ColecoVision version and it's a big step up from the 2600 port. The graphics are more on point with the arcade game with the colors especially looking very good. The sprites are fairly detailed and the animation is much better in this version, however, the speed of the game is not. When there is a lot of action on the screen, everything slows down and the scrolling gets extremely choppy. The sound effects and music are good with the opening tune easily recognizable as the arcade original. The game does include the parachuting soldiers, but it does omit the UFO stage. Control wise it plays great, it's just too bad the scrolling wasn't just a little bit smoother. Now here is a nice surprise. The MSX version is very well done and looks to be programmed by Konami themselves. Although graphically it does look similar to the ColecoVision version, the scrolling is a little bit smoother and so is the animation. The sprites are detailed and the speed of the game is fairly close to the arcade game. Sound effects and music are good and definitely do not grate on your nerves like the 2600 port. Everything from the arcade game has been included from the parachuting soldiers to the enemy attack formations. Finally, it also includes the UFO level which was sorely missing from the ColecoVision version. The playability is great and it feels like you are playing the actual arcade game.
The X68000 version is a bit of an oddity in my opinion. When I booted this game up for the first time and after playing it for 15 seconds, I had to check and make sure I didn't do any crack beforehand because the speed of the game is insanely fast. While the graphics are nicely detailed and the animation is smooth, they are not quite exactly arcade perfect and more of a loose translation. The sound effects and music are good and the controls are very responsive. Everything from the arcade game is here including all five levels. It's a pretty good conversion but the system is capable of so much more. Another excellent clone was released for the Commodore 64 back in 1986 called Space Pilot. This was designed by the same German programmer who gave us the horrendous Galaga clone on the same system. How this was never pursued by the legal team at Konami is beyond me. This is a very close conversion to the arcade original including the sprites along with the music and sound effects. The only thing that is lacking is that the backgrounds do not change colors when switching time periods. Other than that, everything from the arcade game has been included. It plays great and feels like an official conversion of the arcade game. Fantastic homebrew version was released for the Vectric system called Vector Pilot. For those of you who don't know, and since this is the first time I have ever covered a Vectrix game, the unit was released back in 1982 and featured an integrated CRT monitor. Since everything was monochrome, games would include color overlays to be laid on top of the screen. There were also a few unique peripherals for the system such as 3D capabilities as well as a light pin. Vector Pilot is a fantastic conversion with smooth animation and scrolling with only a hint of slowdown but only when there are a lot of enemies on screen. The sound effects and music are very close to the arcade game and the playability is spot on. The color overlays take a little bit of getting used to but overall this is a fantastic homebrew version of Time Pilot. One other homebrew version which was released back in 2018 was Time Pilot for the Atari 8-bit line of computers. This is another excellent homebrew version of Time Pilot. The graphics are zoomed in and honestly it hinders the playability. It's hard to see where the enemies are coming from because of the close perspective. The sound effects and music are great and the controls are spot on. Time Pilot came along right in the middle of the golden age of arcades. It offered a fresh take on the shooting genre with the different eras and also the different enemy types. This is probably my number two favorite shooter of all time right behind Galaga. If you've never had a chance to travel through time while taking down blimps, B-52s, rescuing parachuters and also taking on aliens, be sure and give this game a shot. You'll be glad you did. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give me a like, share, subscribe and comment. Also if you'd like to support me on Patreon please click the link below. Thank you so much for watching.